Hello, I'm Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use auxiliaries. So that would be things like buses, groups, sends and return tracks. They can be used to help speed up your workflow, organize your project and improve the quality of your mix. So if you don't know what an auxiliary is, it's basically a track that doesn't have any instruments or sounds on it. I'm going to talk you through each of them in this video video and if you want to skip to your favorite auxiliary the timestamps are below in the description. All right so here's the project that I am going to be using for this video it's something that I started working on on stream I might keep it I might not that's the beauty of music production uh, but let me play it for you so you can hear what we have. All right, so we have some instruments, some samples, all on individual tracks, all individually named, and they aren't grouped or organized in any way, shape or form. They're just all individual tracks. Now, from the top of my head, I believe that the first four are drum tracks. So let's just check. Cool, drum and percussion tracks. So we could group these and this is the first auxiliary that I wanna to talk to you about. It's really easy in Ableton and you can actually group within group, which really does help with organization. So if you click on one of the tracks and you hold down on shift, so you select all of them, click on the top one, you now have four tracks selected and we can press command or control and G and we group the tracks together. Now they're all inside this one collapsible group. So we can collapse it here and open it up. If we solo the group, we can hear that this is all of the tracks contained within this group. You can also color your group. So right click and change the color and then you can assign track color to grouped tracks and clips. And now it changes the color of the entire group and all of the clips within that group. And you'll see on the ins and outs on the bottom here of the individual tracks within this group, they are outputting to one group. If we go up to the top, this is the name of our group. So if we rename it control or command R and we name this drums, we'll now see that the output of the individual tracks has changed to drums. So this just shows us that each of these tracks is contained within this group. Now, if you wanted to group within a group, you just select on one of the tracks, hold down on shift, select the rest of the tracks that you want to group, or you can press control as well. So you could select individual tracks like this, and you now press control or command and G and you group those tracks together. So now we have a group within a group. So that's the first auxiliary. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. You're just grouping similar instruments together. Now, another way to set this up and the more old school way of doing it would be to create a drum bus. And actually the group that we have here, which is drums, this is actually a drum bus but we could manually create a drum bus which is what they used to do in the old days and in some other DAWs as well so you would press control or command t to create a new track i'm just going to remove it from the group and this would be now our drum bus so rename it drum bus and from here we want to send our tracks i'm just going to ungroup these we want to send our drum tracks to this drum bus. Let's bring the drum bus at the top and we're going to send them with the output. So select on all of the tracks, send them to drum bus. And if we solo this drum bus right now, we can see that nothing is coming in even though our tracks are playing because we've got metering levels here. So we need to press in. And now this is our drum bus, but the tracks are not grouped. And this now means that we can double click on the drum bus, open up the browser, and we could find a effect or processing that we would like to process on this drum bus. So let's go for glue compressor. We can drag and drop that onto our drum bus and we can start to attenuate now this glue compressor, which is gluing all of the tracks that we've sent 
to our drum bus. So now we have a drum bus with a glue compressor on there and the tracks are not grouped and it's just the more old school way of routing from your tracks to a drum bus. It just means that you can process as you can see on this drum bus here. We don't have any samples, any instruments, any sounds. It just means that you can now process without manipulating the individual tracks and also you can process groups of tracks at the same time. So we've done groups, we've done buses, and now we're gonna do sends and returns. And sends and returns in Ableton, you are restricted to 12 return channels. To get to your returns, you just click the R down here, and we can see that we don't actually have any return channels at the moment. You can right click to insert a return track, or you can see here that we have a shortcut. So Control, Alt, and T will insert a return track. So I'm gonna press Control, Alt, and T. And now we're having return tracks, return tracks, return tracks, return tracks, but that's it, it's 12. So with using returns in Ableton, I'm gonna show you another way that you can do parallel processing, which is what this is, uh, as there is another way to do it in Ableton. So I will show you after I walk you through the sends and returns. And the way that I like to think of sends and returns is you are sending from your instrument tracks or even your drum bus or your groups, you are sending a portion of that signal to a return channel to be processed in parallel. So alongside, alongside the signal that say for example is on this drum bus right now, we would come over here, we can see our send, we increase the amount and then the amount is going to be sent to the return channel and we can control the amount that is being sent here to the return channel. At the moment, there is nothing on the return channel, but we could do some parallel compression, for example. So let's go onto the glue compressor and drum full parallel, drag that onto the return channel. And now we can send our signal. It's already being sent a little bit. Just a note on return channels is that you want your return effects and processing to be on 100% wet. Because you're using them in parallel, generally, although this is not a definite rule, but generally you would want them to be 100% wet because you have your dry signal, your original signal, already existing in the project. We can see down here, drum full parallel, it's actually on 50% wet. So let's increase it to 100%. Now let's play it. Okay, and we can see here on our return channel that we do have a meter if I solo it. Now, as I said before, you are restricted to 12 return channels in Ableton. Generally, what I like to do would be to add another two return channels and put a delay on one of them and a reverb on the other one. And then I would come up here and you can see that we have new sends created on our drum bus. We've actually had new sends created on every track so we could send whatever we wanted to send to our return channels and we could start to increase, say on this percussive here, just increase the delay and the reverb. So if I solo this, you'll hear it now.
By having return channels, it means that you can send multiple tracks to the same returns and it's going to be cohesive with your project that everything is being processed in a very similar way in parallel. Now, earlier in the video, I did say that you could do processing in parallel without using sends and returns in Ableton Live and that would be using the audio effect rack. So if we come up to our drum bus here, we have a glue compressor on here at the moment but let's put a delay and a reverb on our drum bus. I'm going to group these together. So we're going to select on the top bars, hold down on shift and like how we grouped our tracks, command or control G, and we've now created a group. If we open this up, we can see that we have a chain. I'm going to right click and create another chain and you can see that just like with our sends and returns, we have two chains being processed in parallel with each other parallel. Uh, so they're alongside each other. This is the dry signal, the top one, the one with no processing on it. And this is the processed or return. Let's call this return. So that's our dry and that's our return channel. And now we can dictate how much of the signal we want to come out using the decibel meter here. So I'm going to bring it down to zero or infinite And I'm just gonna bring up the dry wet on both of the effects. So by adjusting the effects and getting them on a 100% wet and then blending them in using the decibel, the volume slider here, you can start to process in parallel like how you did with sends and returns. But you don't need to create many, many, many thousands of return channels because Ableton will not allow you to do more than 12. And that is the four types of auxiliaries that you can use to help speed up your workflow and improve your mixes in Ableton Live. Also, make sure that you take advantage of using the audio effect rack so that you can increase your parallel processing capabilities as Ableton will only let you create 12 return channels. I'm Becky Safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember that my able to live course is still on pre-sale if you want to grab a huge discount on a complete overview of ableton learn how to use it faster than if you would do on your own then check out my course below as i'm going to be increasing the price very very soon please give the video a comment like thumbs up and a subscribe as it will help support the channel and i massively appreciate all of your support i'm becky safe and i will see you for another video bye